and welcome to Legal Affairs. My name is Diamond Liddy, and I'm the public defender for the 19th Judicial Circuit. Oh my goodness, I am so excited about today's show. <laughs> and I, I know I always am, but this one is just unbelievable. It's a program run by the St. Saint, Saint Lucie County um, that is called Student Perks. Now, I've got to give you a little background before I introduce our guests and we talk about the really cool things they're doing um, in the St. Lucie County school system. But um, this truly is one of the most unique programs um, that we have um, in our county. And uh, it just, uh, you know, I'm embarrassed that I just accidentally found out about it. So I knew our viewers would want to hear about it. So without further ado, let, let me introduce the people here. First of all, we have Doug Baber, who is the HR director currently for St. Lucie County, correct? Yes, ma'am. Welcome, Doug. And then Bill Tomlinson, who is the dire executive director for ESE. And tell us what ESE means, Bill. Exceptional Student Education. Okay. And then uh, Lisa Kitz Mueller. Miller. Miller, uh, the program specialist with ESE. Okay. Now, let's back up for a moment. Um, the way that I learned about this was talking to Doug about um, the Sunshine Kitchen. I want to I start there, and then I want to talk about this cool thing that we're doing in our county. Let's talk about the Sunshine Kitchen, Doug. So the Sunshine Kitchen is kind of a, a, a startup program that the county's doing. Right. Um, it's, um, it's to CERT, as part of the CERTA Research Park. Uh, the Sunshine Kitchen is a, a kitchen that allows uh, people that want to do startup businesses right. to come in and use a commercial grade kitchen. So we have a chef on staff, his name's Chef Matt, he's with the Flavored Fork. Um, a lot of people that operate food trucks go and prepare their stuff out of there. There's people that want to start up a business where they want to make their own cakes and instead of trying to rent out a space and start up your own business from somewhere else, you can go there, rent a little kitchen time, it's inexpensive. Um, and, and start your whole process there, get your stuff made, make sure it's something that you can do that's going to be feasible. Wow. And from there, and, and this is, how long has this been going on? So I believe they're uh, in their second year now out of, out of the uh, to start up research parks. Right? Yeah, which is just so cool. That's off of Kings Highway in St. Lucie County. Okay. okay. Now, from there, it was jump-started or whatever, uh, a program called Student Perks. And that's what we want to talk about today. And Lisa, why don't we start with you? What exactly are, are or is Student Perks? Student Perks is a coffee shop that we started in actually um, Fort Pierce at the County Administration Building to start. It's been in existence for about four years. And what it is, is it's a little coffee cart that the students have one day a week. And they go over there and they actually sell coffee. They sell uh, bagels and fruit and, and go over like there that to where? The, where to the county administration building okay. okay okay and so the students are learning social skills they're learning human relation type skills um, how to do some of these things to prepare them for jobs in the future but these aren't your standard st lucie county school system students are these they, are students who are part of um, the exceptional student education department and all the students have disabilities Okay. So this allows them sometimes a little bit of extra time that they need to learn some of these skills and to practice. And that's very hard to duplicate in a classroom because, right. you know, different things happen when you're in that business site and you have to be a little flexible. And so they have to learn that and they have to learn, you know, all the social skills that they need, the smiles and the good attitudes and, and you know, the helpfulness that you need when you work in a business setting. Now, what age group um, are these students? Most of these students have completed uh, most of their coursework, so most of them are probably juniors and seniors. Okay. Okay. And and it, when you say I I understand the they are exceptional students with disabilities. Without going into the detail of it, these can be with children with learning disabilities. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, D deaf, they, mute, I mean, anything? They typically are students with much more uh, cognitive type disability. So okay. they're students who, you know, may need a little bit more support. 
So our job coach, Martha Taylor, is there and she assists them and helps them and helps them to learn good job skills and to redirect when that's needed. And uh, Doug, before we started the show, you were given kudos to Martha Taylor. I guess this was her brainchild. Yeah, you? she was the one that started the whole thing rolling. I mean, she's done everything from starting up the business to uh, she, she had a, an existing relationship with Commissioner Hutchinson. Right. So she came to the county building one day and pitched it to Commissioner Hutchinson and she immediately, Commissioner Hutchinson said, hold on a second. She got up, walked over, got Mr. Tipton, the county administrator, brought him in and said, you got to hear this. Yeah. And the next thing you know, it's on my desk and I'm writing uh, contracts with the, with the school district and we've partnered together for four years. And for us, it helps like twofold. For the county building, it's kind of like a, a desert for food. There's no food in there for us. Right. <laughs> so every Tuesday, these kids with these smiling faces come and they're just, I mean, they are just amazing. Just, it just, People come from all over the county building and all the constitutional offices, and it's generally on a day when we have a commission meeting at, at uh, that morning at nine. So oh, right. They're there prior to that, and all the commissioners come down. And yesterday, the you know, Gertrude Walker was there. You know, just there's, there's people just pop in and have these cameos with these kids, and the kids just eat it up. So they are <laughs> well, and they're do where you've got some um, good collaboration with, um, and Bill, you could probably answer this with Starbucks. I guess Starbucks is donated and. <laughs> This is the first year, actually, that uh, Starbucks has come on with us, and thanks to the help of Doug and others, they have started to supply coffee and the other supplies that are necessary to run the kiosk, and it's just been a wonderful relationship to have them as partners with what we're doing and to have the opportunity for our kids to experience these real life experiences outside of a classroom. Right. Lisa, Lisa said right. you can't duplicate this in a classroom setting. No, no. So you need the community where children will be living and working. Our ultimate goal is for kids to be able to obtain gainful competitive employment. Absolutely. And now they start putting these tools in their tool belt and developing these skills. The communication skills that they develop by being able to interact with all of these other individuals within the community is just unmeasurable. Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable to see the growth once they step out into the real world of work. Well, well go ahead, Doug. I was just going to add one thing onto there. Something that I'm pretty proud of is the kids don't we're not charging four dollars for a cup of Starbucks. Right. You know, everything's a dollar. <laughs> I, right. You know, you fruit's said fifty that cents, and you know they're they're not there. We're not. They're not trying to make a fortune, but they, you know, they're just trying to keep the cost going. And with Starbucks partners with us, uh, Glenn from St. Lucie West Starbucks was the kind of the brainchild for that one to get involved with mm -hmm. us, and uh, he worked with his corporate, and they donate all the supplies, just like Mr. Tomlinson said, and, and that really has taken a burden off of what we did to support it because they worked off of whatever tips and money that they made to reproduce more food. So now it's. It's really helpful. So you get a nice cup of coffee, Starbucks, with all the creamers and all the, <laughs> for a dollar, you can't beat it. Oh, God, no, because it's what, five, six dollars right. now? Well, what, now, um, where does the money go? The money goes back into the program. Okay. So okay. it just continues to support. And because of the work that we did with Doug and Martha's work to continue these programs, we've been able to expand that to Port St. Lucie City Government. We're expanding it now to Fort Pierce City Hall. And right. then we will open our fourth kiosk here in this new building for St. Lucie Public Schools. That we're taping today. That we're oh, taping great, today. great. Yes. Are, do you have um, that many students that Oh, oh yes, we have wow. a lot of students that qualify, and and you know we we're using all the high schools, so that's exciting because different high schools, and then they get to meet each other. So that's been really fun because they work as teams. So yesterday we were at City Hall, and Mr. Mims interviewed the students. They all get interviewed. They get interviewed in every situation. They get it's kind of a group interview, but they right. all get interviewed. They also get a tour of the county government so that they oh, understand wow. yeah. about county government and when they might need to come to that building yeah. and if they need to go to that building where they go and what they do and so yesterday they interviewed with Mr. Mims and he did a fantastic job and they they were so excited they couldn't wait to get there and to interview and it went really really well so it's it's just so much fun to see them you grow know blossom and, yeah. and grow and so um, Fort Pierce Westwood and Fort Pierce Central are going to the city building obviously proximity is right. closer and then we have a uh, Centennial and Port St. Lucie High that go to the county administration building and then the city building in Port St. Lucie at this time. Okay, so how many students are involved at, at this point? We, ta we take 10 each time, but we have backup students. So okay. not all, the same 10 go every single time. Okay. So we probably have, I would say, at least 25, 30 students or at more. At any given time that are going through this. 
th doing this? They go one day a week, so okay. each building is a different day of the week. And then they also go to the Paula uh, Lewis Library on Fridays and do a, uh, a little program with the uh, reading. They have a reading program with parents and little children, okay. and they go there and do that as well. So oh. we're everywhere in the county. <laughs> well, well, how, okay. It, it, walk me through the process. Do do teachers um, it, recommend a mm -hmm. student? Do the, mm -hmm. the parents ask about? I mean, how does it? The students uh, recommend, and also the students um, in their IEPs, they're ready for that type what's of an training. IEP? <laughs> I'm sorry, an individual education plan, which each student has, that okay. kind of plans out. If their, they have a disability, correct. then they have it. Okay, correct. Go ahead. And then they they look, you know, they look at where they are, what their goals are, what they hope to do in the future, those kind of things, and have discussions about that. And then, if it's appropriate, then they would recommend that they you know, go out to one of the coffee carts to learn some additional job skills. Uh, and I could expand on that just a little bit because students with disabilities, we begin service at age three and we take that service all the way to age 21 if they choose to remain in school for that wow. long. So a lot of our children will graduate in their normal four-year cohort and leave school, but we have other kids that will stay on. We are mandated by federal law to begin working to identify what's going to happen for them post school when they turn age 14. So we oh, begin wow. at age 14 with all of this planning through that individual education process and we start identifying what their goals are, what their dreams, what their aspirations are and try to find things that will match up with what they want to do. So the kids that are in this Coffee Perks program are still completing their four-year cohort. Okay. But they may choose to stay on beyond that four years and up through the age of 21. So we give them this real life experience. Then we have another program that they can matriculate into or they can apply for, and that's our Project Search program, which is a nationally recognized program with Martin Memorial Hospital in tradition. And they learn all aspects of working in the hospital setting, and that leads to even further opportunities for gainful employment. Oh, my goodness. And who did that? This was all part of our work in Exceptional Ed. We were able to receive a grant to, to work toward building this relationship with Martin Memorial and Lisa is our dynamic transition <laughs> specialist and she sets the standard for what we want to see for our children. Wow. Mm -hmm. Doug, you wanted to chime in. Well, I tell you, Miss Taylor is a, uh, she's a stickler. These have to be the top performing mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. You know, these, they, she doesn't just bring anybody to these buildings to work for this program. So they have to excel and get their work done and be good in their classes. So she really, she pushes them and I'm sure the other job coaches do as well, but mm -hmm. um, she holds them to a very high standard and they have to, you know, they dress properly and they're very polite and uh, everything that she does with the program, she just lives and breathes it. I mean, she is just a, a, a huge asset for the school district for helping these children. But um, one of the things that we started this year with the Sunshine Kitchen that you spoke a little bit about earlier was uh, kind of just, just to go on to what Mr. Thomas was talking about. We have now two opportunities for children to uh, young adults to move into different professions. So first they work in, in the student purse program right. and they learn customer service and working with people and working with money and, and serving things in that nature. And now we've expanded to the Sunrise, uh, excuse me, Sunshine Kitchen where they actually go out and they work with Chef, Chef Matt from the Flavored Fork. And uh, they get all the supplies donated as well from one of the vendors and they're making muffins and they got a package machine where they're packaging the muffin. Ms. Kitz Miller this morning was just printing the labels to put on there. So now we're making our own food. So the, the young adults get to go out there and learn about back of the house. So they've learned about the front of the house for four years. Now they're learning about the back of the house, how to cook and clean and, and prep and how to make food. And you should have seen their faces, some of the pictures I saw with them. They were just so excited to do something other then they've been doing the coffee cart for years and they love it, but now they're like, wow, this is where the food comes from, you know? So right. it's just a, it's an eye-opening experience. And the more we can add to those to give them experience on real life opportunities. We've had success stories from our program. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a couple young adults that get jobs. One of them's working as a, in the bakery at Kyle G's. You know, we, uh, we have another one that just started who went through the program through Project Search that they were speaking about that works for uh, St. Lucie County at um, the Oxbow. So this young man wow. is out there guiding people on trails and just, they're all over the county. She does. She does a great job getting them employment, and, and he's getting paid. He's a he's a county employee get working, mm -hmm. and benefits coming, and he's just as happy as he could be. Just a, an exceptional young man, and we hope to continue with that process. So we really, um, <laughs> they just love it. And the last thing to add is just I know I've been talking a lot. Excuse me, but uh, the unemployment is at three percent. You know, right. we heard State of the Union yesterday and all that conversation, but they're, they're, we're full employment at three percent. So employers like myself and other employees are looking for people that have 
outside the normal skills, you know, whether it's somebody in a wheelchair that just has to work a reception desk or whether it's somebody that's doing cleaning or, or, or additional things. You wouldn't believe some of the stuff they do. I walked with them at, at the Martin Health, excuse me, Cleveland Clinic to see what they do. And you would not believe some of the some of the stuff that they do with the machines and the widgets in the boxes and serving food to people that are in the hospital. And it's just cooking food in the hospital. So it's just a, a great opportunity. Wow. And I, I, I applaud them for everything they're doing to put these uh, young adults to work. Well, it, uh, okay, I'm a little confused. <clears throat> they uh, they apply for this for this mm-hmm. to be allow, to allowed uh, to be enrolled in the student perks program and the other things you talked about. Mm-hmm. And uh, there I, there's a screening process, as you said, Doug. They have to you know be doing well, but you know all of those things. I get mm-hmm. that. Then. They can actually be in these programs for their entire high school career. No, or no, how, they wouldn't how, be doing. They wouldn't be doing student perks for that long. Generally, their junior and senior year. Okay. And we focus on their senior year, but like Mr. Tomlinson said, they can stay in school till they're 21. Okay. So we may move them at some point to a different program. Oh, okay. You, you so know, that's, that's how the, they to those programs mm-hmm. that you mm-hmm. talked about. Because okay. we're moving toward paid competitive employment in everything we do with these right. positions. So those 20, 25 students you talked about rotate every what? We, they go every week. So they go to a different <laughs> No, no, no. But day. I mean, oh. the, those change and you get a new group. How often? At the end of, the, at the end of a school year, oh, the ones okay. that graduate and leave us, then we have to replace <clears throat> those slots I got gotcha. you and now what about the muffin bakers oh my gosh now are that is that a different group than the the kids that are doing the kiosk coffee or is that this they're learning their goal is to rotate them yes yeah our goal is to okay. rotate them because like I said they don't all go to the coffee carts because right. we only take about 10 right and so then those other students may go out and bake the muffins the ones that don't go to the coffee cart that week gotcha we usually do the muffin baking on Monday and they also go to City Hall on Monday. Okay. Okay. And it's, it, every day it's a different, yes. a different place. It's sort of taking this process and looking at it as a whole. There has to be a production team to make and bake the items that are going to be sold in the kiosk. Right, right. So we give kids that opportunity to be behind the scenes to learn all of that. Then there's the kids that are on the front end of that. Once they have learned that process, then we can rotate them through the production end of this. So it gives them an opportunity to learn everything about the business. And that's our ultimate goal because when they go out and they seek competitive employment, then they're going to have greater skill set that makes them more employable. Well, and this is something they literally put on a resume, correct? Yes, absolutely. I mean, yes, that they've ma'am. been through this, they've mm-hmm. successfully completed <clears throat> it or whatever. Right. Now, there's no grade for any of this, correct? Well, they do take employment classes. So this oh, okay. in career exploration classes, and that's all part of their high school curriculum. So okay. this can be a graded activity for them. Okay, so uh, again, to clarify, they are going through the normal high school curriculum Absolutely. as they go through this extra... <laughs> the, I, all, all children in our public school system, children that are disabled or non-disabled, graduate with a standard high school diploma. Right. They just go a different pathway, some of them, right. to get that high school diploma. And what we're doing is giving them more and more opportunities to have further expansion to get that employment or get that diploma, the standard diploma. And some of them will have greater work opportunities as mm-hmm. part of the coursework for that diploma. So. And again, I'm just ignorant on the education. No, I, you know, it's not mm-hmm. the, you not know, you I do, do robberies, <laughs> and, you know, burglar. But um, it, it, when you said, Bill, that someone could stay in the program or whatever for 20, mm-hmm. till they're 21, mm-hmm. are, are they also, are they taking time to get their high school diploma, I mean, is... So most most children with disabilities will go through the four-year program just like their non-disabled cohort counterparts. And and they go through that program. They earn the 24 credits. They maintain a 2.0 GPA or better in order to get it. They do all of those requirements. But because they may need further opportunity, we have to expand their educational program up through the end of the semester in which they turn 21. That's a federal rule. 
Out of the 5,000 plus children that we have in this district with disabilities, not every one of them. There's 5,000? Over 5,000 children, hmm. but wow. that's children with mild disabilities right. to the most intensive type of disability. But several children will stay and we have to continue to give them more programming opportunities and more opportunities to learn, but we don't want them to stay in high school, repeat, take four years of English and then take two more years of English. Right, okay, So we yeah, start okay. giving them something totally different to I, work toward. I got you. Out of those 5,000, how many are there until they're 21? Every year we would probably have more than 100 children that would stay wow. with us that expand that opportunity. And now, every school district is not doing this. That is correct. I mean, right? Yeah. I, I, I just am so proud of, I mean, seriously, you just, you, you know, and, and you know, um, I, I know people who are loyal viewers of this show are probably have heard me say this a million times, but I mean, this, this tr the Treasure Coast, our St. Louis. Of course, I grew up here, so my heart's here. But um, you know, if people <clears throat> only knew the good that that people people just don't. I mean, I'm in the mix of things, and I'm just finding out about this. That's that's unbelievable. Well, I got to tell you that it's catching on. Yes. Uh, just <laughs> yesterday, and um, we've uh, you know three years ago we applied the school district and and with the, the county applied for a NACO award, so National Association of Counties, and we, we okay. received that award. Mm -hmm. So it's a nationally accredited program. We also received an award from the Florida Association of Counties um, for an excellence award uh, this past year. So this is catching on. So once we receive the NACO award, anybody can use our program and duplicate it across the country. Wow. So just recently, we had Indian River School District stop by one of our kiosks in the county building, and then yesterday, they actually sent an email requesting information about how to get the, you know, the contract going between the two, the two entities and things right. like that. So they're eager to, to, to duplicate it, you know. So we're, but we're also keeping it close to our, to our chest well, because yeah. we want to keep the integrity of the program. That's the biggest thing that I had. Once we sure. went to the second facility, you know, when Councilwoman Morgan saw the, saw the kiosk at the county building, she was there for a commission meeting one day. She said, we're getting this at City Hall. And I said, right. well, absolutely. But I just want you to do it the way we did it. Right. Where the kids, where you were just speaking about, they come in and they interview. You know, they pick mm -hmm. a manager, you know, they're running a the cart, they're making coffee, they're, you know, they have different jobs that they have to do, and they get the tour of the, of the, of the city, you know, the same thing, they met the city manager, right, and they, right. they did all those kind of things. And so they're getting extra education on top of all these life skills, mm -hmm. so, oh my they, goodness. They get so impressed when they see themselves on TV, you know, they, sure. they, we bring them to the commission meeting, and we do like a, we did a, a proclamation this year during Disability Awareness Month, and right. I just, it's just the, they just love it you know they probably showed it at school on the tv yeah. and it was in the newspaper i saw mr gent getting a cup of coffee at one of the kiosks in port st lucie so it's they're excited to see themselves and i think it really keeps them excited to stay into the program and they do they come back we have a, a young lady uh, megan mm -hmm. she uh she was working at our coffee cart at the county building for a couple of years and then she moved to westwood so now she's kicking off the program with the city of fort pierce that she was just talking about with cheyenne helms there and the city wow. manager and the, mm -hmm. in the city of fort pierce building so it's just that they kind of grow and now she'll be the manager of that cart so it's just kind of a a thing where they come back year after year and it's just exciting and for them too so excuse me everybody's been real embracing for this and so you know one of the things that was important to me is that our students have to be able to speak sometimes because there's something they need and they right. take a lot of the public transportation and they do all those things so i wanted them to know what it felt like to stand before the commissioners and ask for something or if they wanted to speak about something right. that impacted their life so mr baver has been very good about letting them go up they go up in the commission chambers they get to stand there at the microphone they get to talk see what that's like, see what that feels like. So right. they're learning about county government as well, which is good because now it's kind of twofold what we're doing. Right. And Mr. Tipton speaks to them and everybody speaks to them. I mean, they all come up and talk to them. And well, how could you not? Yeah. <laughs> And I know in Port St. Lucie, when they first opened the, you know, with that being a plaza, yeah. the uh, police officers oh, came yeah. over and they all applauded. Remember when they yeah, walked in, sure. they all applauded when the police officer uh, walked yeah. in. Oh, so God. it's just really neat to see the community embrace them and our students to embrace the community like they have in this program. It's just been wonderful. No, yeah. Bill, you want I would to just have to echo that. The relationship that this has created between the school system and other partners is just phenomenal. Oh, and, yeah. And the the real life experiences that we're able to bring to our students enhances their abilities 
but it also keeps them in school. We have a graduation rate for students with disabilities at 92%. It's one of the wow. very highest in the state, and we're very proud of the oh, work that we continue goodness. to do. So. Yeah, this, this is, no, it, it is, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, you know, you, I mean, are there anything, is there anything else like this in the state, or, or is this unique at all, the, there, as the little prince would say, there, right? There are other programs similar to this in the state. I'm not so sure that all of them have as, as a the collab good a right. collaborative work right. as we do with this. There are other school systems that have a project search program because that's a nationally recognized program. Right. But what we're doing in this we feel is unique, and, and the expansion of this to be able to say we're about to open our fourth kiosk here and it's just remarkable so that, very no, with I, it. I mean but but I and I say this on so many programs too not only is it amazing all the incredible unique mm -hmm. wonderful things this community does for people um, but the unique collaboration that we have in in this community Good. I mean nowhere else uh, I'm gonna say this um, nowhere else in the state of Florida is there the, the collaboration with all the, you know, even if it's not, whether it's, even if it's not the, the, the department that um, you normally work with, there's, there's collaboration with education and uh, law enforcement and public defenders and, Business. and, bu and businesses. I mean, it, they don't have to be from the same ilk, if you will. Everybody gets together, works together to make great things happen. And I'm telling you, that is not the way it is <laughs> throughout the state of Florida. Sure. Um, go ahead, Bill. For me, I've been here you know, several years in the state in working in the school system here. And it's, it's such a wonderful experience to go into the community and to go into a business and see many of the children that have come through our programs. They're, uh, they're working. They're working <laughs> you know, and and they're, they've been able to maintain and hold those jobs right. for long periods of time. We have one kid that's working at a Publix that he's been there 20 years. Oh, and my goodness. Yeah. It's absolutely fantastic to see him every time we go. So. No, no. Go and ahead. And also, I just want to tell you, Glenn from Starbucks, right. okay, he graduated from Fort Pierce Central. Oh, did he? So he's okay. a Local person too. So anyway, it's really good for these students to be able to see their successes and how right. they have, you know, worked the ranks and and moved up. Maybe they started out, you know, yeah, serving they, coffee, right. and then they they've moved up. So he he is hoping to employ some of our students too. So wow. he likes the skills that they're getting at the coffee cart, and he and um, I believe the manager is going to be joining us from the new Fort Pierce store at City Hall. Oh, and okay. they go the and help on, the students okay. learn things the Starbucks way, and right. you know, kind of help them out with with that business piece and you know that's just wonderful that they do that I mean that's such a time that they are out of their business to help us oh, to, absolutely you know, to get these students where they need to be for employment we appreciate that so much no absolutely our teachers our superintendent our board everybody is behind these programs oh. and making it work and mm -hmm. we're so fortunate to have that level of support to, well, and transportation. transportation and transportation right. huge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Because they have to get where they're going. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, as I told you before we started, we have about 30 seconds left. I usually, but well, we had so much to talk about. I usually have everybody talk about themselves and where they came from. But I, I got to end with this. How I know you have, how many years in education do you have? This is 33 for me. Yeah, I, I knew that. And I didn't know the answer before I asked Bill. So this is 33 in St. Lucie, but it's my 41st year in education. Yeah. I rest my case. I rest my case. Well, thank all of you. This is just wonderful. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. It was really nice to speak about it and uh, maybe come out and have a cup of coffee with us. Okay? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Look forward to it. Thank you.